Okay, oh. Coach Liner, I'm ready for my home exercise. Very good, very yeah. good. I'm glad that you're here. <laughs> hey, I even brought my uh, recycled bottle. <laughs> uh. Ladies and gentlemen, this exercise, uh, please call your friends and neighbours to watch now because this is a very rare occasion. Yes, it is. you can see, firstly, a very handsome instructor. Don't say like. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, uh, it is exercises that is free that you can do at home with everything you have at home. So, That's for right. example, your, all your antibacterial spray and all your sanitizer, right? Finish already, you go and put water. Water, and then you can use them as weights. Yeah, right? yeah, you can. And then the chair, he's going to show you how after skyping or zooming or <laughs> uh, talking to your 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 children, you can actually get up and do all these exercise. Yes, that's right. right. So, yeah. So so is there a, a warm up that we need to do, or it's inclusive in your session? So in the session, we will actually be learning a couple of movements. So. When we learn those movements, we can use that as a warm up as well. So don't need to warm up, huh. but uh, make sure you are you know, well rested before your session. Make sure you have eaten something maybe for breakfast, but don't eat too. Uh, not, not like no, so not right after yeah, uh, exactly. heavy lunch. Yeah. Okay. Is there an age uh, suggestion to this exercise that we're we're gonna do? Well, no. Everyone and anyone can do it. You should do it with a family actually. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Now you go and summon your whole family, and then we will join join together and. Turn on the TV, right? Yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, then we can do it together. All right, ladies and gentlemen, over to Liner. I go and put water first, ah. Huh? Okay, thank you. So, so today we are going to learn a little bit about how to move and how to do what we like to call functional movement. So the first thing we're gonna learn how to do is a squat. Many of you know how to do this already. So, for example, a squat is as simple as this. Many of you do that every single day, get off the chair. But today, I'm going to teach you guys how to do it properly and eventually do so without the chair. Why is the squat so important? The squat is important because it makes you functional, helps you live a better life. Imagine that one day, you for some reason end up on the floor. Learning how to squat helps you get off the floor. That's very important. So how do we start? We start standing. Your chest right here, planted, you plant your feet, shoulder width apart. From here, you start by bracing your abs. Imagine someone is throwing a little ball in your belly. Imagine someone is, uh, imagine your little grandson is running towards your belly. What do you do? You suddenly brace your belly. So you brace your belly hard. From here, you push your hips back. You go down, you sit on the chair, touch the chair. Everything still stays straight. You stay stable and you stand. You can do that again three more times. Down, stand. Down, stand. One last one. Down, stand. So there are a couple of movement pointers that we want to talk about. First thing, we're going to start from ground up. First thing is your heels. Your heels will always stay on the ground. As you squat, your heels stay on the ground. If your heels come off the ground, that's not good for your knees. I don't want that to happen. I want your heels to stay on the ground. The next thing, your knees will always track outwards, will point outwards. So if I squat, my knees go outwards. If I squat and my knees go Inwards, uh, that's not good for your knees. Your knees got to go outwards each time we squat. We're gonna try three reps. Squat, stand, two more. Squat, stand, one last one. Squat, and stand. Okay, next thing, how low do you go? We have a target, a chair right now. But imagine I don't have a chair. I want you to go to your hips, go below your knee. Alright, so imagine if you're having pockets, the pockets will go below your knee. Squat, stand. Squat, stand. One last one. Squat, stand. Alright. For starters, you can look at the mirror to see whether you're going low enough. If not, eventually I want you guys to be able to feel whether you are going low enough. Next thing is your chest position. Your chest position must stay upright. As you squat and stand, your chest is upright. If your chest falls forward or if your back rounds this way, that's not good. 
I want your back to always stay straight. That's why we keep a strong belly. That's what we talked about at the very start. All right. So when I squat, my back stays upright the entire time. So after you do a few repetitions on the chair, feeling a bit more warmed up, what do you do? You get a bit more adventurous. You try to go a little lower. You can use a lower object, a stool maybe, or uh, a, a smaller chair. Or if you feel after you feel comfortable doing that, what you can do is you can flip the chair around, hold the chair, all right? Make sure the chair is planted to the ground, secure. You can use this chair for stability, all right? From here, squat, stand. Use the chair to hold if you need to. Hold the chair a little if you need to, to support, push yourself up. Squat. Use the chair to push yourself up a little bit if you need support. All right? Now, of course, if you feel very comfortable, hands near the chair, squat and stand. So it's in case you ever need to hold it. Start shallow. Eventually, we go lower and lower and lower. That is your squat. I hope you guys are able to do this at home again and again and again. The next movement we're going to talk about is going to be called the knee tucks or seated knee tucks. From here, you place, you sit down on a chair. You're going to place your hands just behind you like this. From here, you're going to bring your feet together and you're going to bring your knees as close to your chest as you can and come back down. One more time, go up. And down, and up, and down, up, and down. For starters, if you feel that it's very difficult, what can you do? Do one leg at a time. One leg go up and down. Next leg, go up and down. All right. Of course, if also that's still too difficult, you can go up a little bit and down. That's enough. Always remember, from your squats to even any movement that we're going to do, if you feel like it is too difficult, the movement is too intense, don't worry, slow it down. Only move on to the next level when you are comfortable. So for example, if I had like, oh, I'm having so much difficulty doing this already, stay, stay in that. Don't need to go higher, don't need to use two legs, All right? You progress as you need, very important. And don't worry if you need to take a break while practicing this. Grab a quick drink of water. Have some rest. Talk to your family members. That'd be nice. All right? So that's for your knee raises. One more time. Knee raises go up and down. Together we're going to do three repetitions. On your own scaling, you can do one leg, you can do two legs, you can do halfway. It doesn't matter. Whatever you can do. Go up and down. One more time and up and down. Thank you so much. Now, make sure your chair is very importantly secure. All right, so that is your squats and your knee raises. So what do we do now that we've learned all this, our first two movements? What do we do with these first two movements? We're going to do a little bit of what I call a workout. You're going to try to do what I like to call a moderate intensity workout, not high a moderate intensity. A lot of you may think to yourself, oh, but I, I'm a little bit older. I, I, I shouldn't be doing moderate or even, I should just do low intensity. But no, that's not true. You do your moderate intensity relative to you. It must be a bit challenging. A bit challenging for yourself. Not as compared to me, neither to your kids, neither to your grandkids, but it's relative to you. So I want you to try your best, but if you feel like, oh, that's a bit too, too tiring for yourself, slow it down. But try your best to make it a little bit challenging. So what's your first workout? All right, your first workout is going to be as such. When we call go, you will start by doing 10 squats. Then you're going to do 10 knee tucks. So this is one round. You are doing three rounds as fast as you can, all right? So you know what? We are going to do one round together, all right? So I'm going to show you guys without the chair, but I'll do the knee tucks with the chair, 
All right. So three, two, one, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine and one last one, ten. Very good. Then we're gonna come to the chair. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's one round. You're gonna do three rounds as fast as you can. Now, do remember, if you are feeling a little, what I like to call twan. Slow it down, rest a little bit. And if you're doing a squat, you feel that you can't, halfway through, you don't use a chair, you're like, oh, I'm really tired, I can't do this anymore. Turn around, use a chair. Suddenly use a chair. Do you use a chair for your squats, it's perfectly okay. Scale as you need, make it easier for yourself as you need. But very importantly, make sure it's a little bit challenging for yourself. Why do we do such workouts? Let's just say today you do this workout and you realize that, hey, you took five minutes to do three rounds. Let's just say five minutes, right? You do the same workout again after one month and then you realize, hey, suddenly I took four minutes as compared to five minutes. What, do you, what, what can you tell about your fitness? You've gotten fitter. This is why it's so important to remember your score or remember your time so that you can progress yourself. But of course, we're not just gonna stop here. We're gonna teach, I'm gonna teach you two more movements and one more quick workout. The next movement that we're gonna talk about is what we call our lunges. So our lunges, okay, it looks very much like this. Of course, as a start, many of you will be like, whoa, that's a bit scary and intimidating. You can use a high table or a chair to help you. So I don't have a table now, but I'm going to assume that this is the height of a table. All right, what do you do? Hold a table for starters, one foot forward, take a big step. From here, all I want you to do, keep your belly tight, same as your squat. You lean forward, try to let your knees go as low as you can and stand up. Do it step by step. So normal height first and stand. Lower, lower. Eventually, if you can get your knee to touch the ground, that's very good. But touch very gently. Alright, so I'm going to show you on this view. Alright, from here, knees slowly, gently touch the ground and stand. Alright, I don't want to see fast. No. Gently touch the ground and stand. Use the table to support yourself. All right? After you do a few reps, turn around the other side. Gently touch the ground again, stand. All right? So, as we do this, and we are more comfortable with this, and our lunges. All right? What do we do next? Two things. We go lower, lower. Initially, you started here, right? You go lower, lower, lower eventually. Make sure you stand up each time with two feet together. And of course, now we go on to a chair. Let's just say we have a chair here. All right. And we want to do our lunges. Same thing. Place our hands on the base of the chair so our support is lesser. Knee touch the ground and stand up. Okay. So eventually you will want to do this without the chair altogether. Or you can do this like this. Couple of important points. Number one, how do you start? Your feet is shoulder width apart. Alright, so as you do your lunges, your stance is also shoulder width apart. The next thing, you want to take a big enough step. If I take a mini step and go down, that's not good. You're going to hurt your knee. Make sure you take a big enough step. How big? 
if you all remember mathematics if you take one big step and I go down my front leg is 90 degrees my back leg is 90 degrees you form a nice little square if you may and from here I'll stand up next thing make sure you stand and start in this manner every single time I don't want you guys to go down and up just like this no I don't want that to happen. I want you to stand up fully you can take a step back you can take a step forward it doesn't matter all right so that is your lunges next we're going to do something called an overhead press or a shoulder press we've used a lot of your legs for the past three movements your stomach for your knee tucks but what about your hands i'm not going to do a typical push-up because i think everyone may have done it before so we're going to do something called a press but what do we use i'm going to use a broomstick all of you have this broomstick at home i'm sure so from here what do you do you start straightening your hands how wide do you grip you grip your your hands will be just outside your hips it's not too narrow no not too wide just outside your hips from here you bring the broomstick right underneath your chin all right from here all right underneath your chin and when I press up, it goes all the way to the sky. Come back down. Come back up again. Come back down. Alright, and relax. So at the top of the movement, it's very, very important. Why? I want to make sure that my hands are straight. My bar is straight up as well. So I don't want the bar to be here. I don't want my elbows to bend when I finish. No, I want my hands to be straight and I want the bar to be behind me. Also very important, you can look in the mirror sometimes or ask your family members, I don't want this to happen. See how when I try to bring the bar behind, I have a very sexy bum coming out. I don't want that. I want to make sure that my body is straight when I do this. All right. One more time, go down, press back up. Last one, go down, and press back up. Okay, everyone has a broomstick. Everyone must try to do this. I am not looking for some for all of you to do this fast. I'm looking to make sure that you all do this correctly. It's very important, even though I said moderate intensity, to make sure that all of you, this workout or the previous workout, that you all do it with the right type of movement to the right form we call it make sure that you are squatting well before you squat fast very very important okay now last bit that we're going to talk about is our last workout we did this a moment ago well done the next part we're going to do this seven minute what does seven minute a M R A P. What does it stand for? It means seven minutes, as many rounds as possible. All right. In seven minutes, you're supposed to do as many rounds as possible of what? Of seven lunges and seven shoulder press or overhead press. So this seven and seven is one round. You're doing as many as you can in. Seven minutes. Simple and easy. So we are going to try that out. We're going to try two rounds. I'm going to show you two rounds and we're going to see. I want to know. Alright, I want you guys to go online and comment how many rounds you guys have done in this workout. Alright, so let's get started. And I call three, two, one, and go. I will do seven lunges. One, two, three, four, five, six, and one more, seven. Seven overhead press. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, one last one, seven. Well, then that was one round. And I'm panting a little bit. Next round, all right? I'm gonna face this side now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Remember, you don't need to follow how fast I do. It's all about your speed. Lastly, we're going to finish off. One, two, three, four, five, six, one last one, and seven. There was two rounds. I took about two minutes for two rounds. That was not too bad. I want to see, like why I mentioned, I want to see how fast, or rather how many rounds you can do in seven minutes. I think it's a good, nice, easy workout for everyone. So, after you're done, it's very important that we need to do a little bit of a stretch down and a cool down. What, how do we do that? We're going to make use of a chair as well. All right, we do have uh, a couple of yoga videos as well. So if you need to check that out, do so. But simple and easy stretches are going to be as such. I just want you guys to face forward. You're going to bring one arm facing across the chest. You're going to bring your arm on your elbow. You're going to bring and pull your arm close to your body. Easy peasy squeeze. All right, from here, relax. You're going to swap sides. Same thing. Pull. Make sure you feel the stretch over here and your shoulder. All right, over here, and relax. Next thing you're gonna do, you're gonna raise your hands up. You're gonna let your right hand go down to the bottom of your neck, near, the, near your back. You're gonna try to pull your arm close as well. You're gonna relax, and you'll change sides. Left hand now, left hand goes down to the lower part of your back. Grab and pull. Very good. And relax. And what we do next? Of course, sit down on your chair, one foot forward, one foot back. All right, in this manner. So if I could face you first, your foot's looking like this. From here, you're going to just lean down. You're going to feel a stretch on your back of your leg over here. You're going to stretch down. And you're good. Relax, change side again. Same thing, you want to try to keep your body straight. You don't want to just lean down this way. You want to keep your body straight as you go down. Same thing, hang on to your chair. Your chair is stable. Always remember your chair must always be stable. Well done, you've done and finished a workout at your own pace. It's very good, relax. Next thing, all right, we're going to now just bring your leg in a very singlish term. You're going to kyao all right? You're going to grab your leg, you're going to hug it close. Hug it very close. You're going to feel a stretch in your bum area. All right, you can do this stretch. This stretch is very useful. When you watch TV sometimes, just stretch. Huh? And relax. Change sides. Same thing. Pull close. Body straight. And relax. Our last thing. That we're going to do this time, we're going to stand up. Same thing, hold on to your table. This is my fake table. I'm going to turn around. This is my fake table. I'm going to hold on to the table. I'm going to just grab my leg. I'm going to pull body straight up. If you can, do this. All right, if you can't, you can just bring your leg to the chair. And just stretch a little bit. That also works. All right. I hope that today you guys have learned a lot. It was a very good workout session. Very good cool down. Always remember, always remember it's not just about going as fast as you can. 
It is also about good movement. Practice this. Record your score. Keep doing this. Because I know that this will definitely help you live a better life. Stay safe. Stay strong. Oh, oh, oh. It looks so easy, but it's not. But it's very fun. Well done, well done. You know what? I just had an idea. You know, from now on, every time I when I wake uh, wake up, and, and since I'm not going to the office, don't have to travel, right? So this period of time uh, that I save from traveling, I should do this exercise. Yeah, that's right. Is that right? Yeah. Do, do you suggest we do it in the beginning or at the end of the day? I would think it starts your day very well. Yeah. So yeah, and it doesn't take more than about 15 minutes. So why not? And the best part is, if you are very sweaty and smelly, nobody can smell you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> All right, to find out more about functional fitness, log on to www.1pa.sg